Hello, this is Dan Riley with Applied Progress, and today I'm going to be talking about the production model within SAP's Business by Design. The production model ties together the Bill of Materials and the Bill of Operations. In this case here, what we're going to do is create a production model for the manufacturing of wort, for making beer. We've identified our product ID, so we identify here our product that is going to be manufactured. We've given this a production model valid from and to date. We've given it, given it ranges within which we can have a five to 500 gallon uh, production lots. And then our scrap rate of 5%, which will have an effect, which I'll discuss later, on the amount of ingredients used. The first thing we do here, one of the first things we do here is we identify, after we've identified the product that we're gonna be making, we identify the bill of material that we're gonna use. This particular product, this wart, has a couple of different ways of manufacturing the exact same end product. Uh, so that's a variant. Well, we've, ch we've chosen which variant we want, which in this case uses different ingredients than variant number one. So this particular, particular production model has a specific set of ingredient lists that it's going to be using that's coming from the bill of materials. The bill of operations, we can copy a uh, bill of operations from another production model. We can rename this one or we can create a new one. Uh, basically, this is where we're creating our bill of operations right here for this production model. Now, let's take a look at the bill of operations itself. We've told it which bill of materials we're using. Now, uh, I've already filled this in, but now what we've done is we're going to identify our different operations, our different activities within those operations, and different steps within the activities. So here what we see here is a high level. We have the operation of make and the operation of check for quality. At the operational level, you identify the resources that are used. In this case, the only resource we're really using that's major is this kettle. So we're identifying the kettle here, and this is the resource within which the system will schedule. This is our primary resource. Now, let's take a look at the make operation for making the work. And we'll explode this down and look at our different activities. These are the different activities. The mashing, the sparging, the wort boiling, etc. the activities that go into the making of this wort. Here's the duration and times. So let's take a look at mashing here. We're going to the mashing operation and at the bottom of the screen here we'll see that mashing is a production type. This can be variable so we can have a variable amount of time based on the amount of the ingredients or it can be fixed. In this case it doesn't really matter how much wort we're making it's going to take us 40 minutes to make it. So in this case, it's a fixed duration. We do have multiple steps here that we're identifying. We're identifying that we're going to heat the water, we're going to add the grains, and then we're going to steep the grains. So within the activity, we have these steps. And each activity is associated with time. And then we just have these individual steps. We don't tie the time to the steps. We also have the ability to identify additional resources that we might use here. These might be labor resources, tooling, anything else we might need in doing this operation. We can identify those different resources here. Okay. So once we've identified our operations and the resources, the individual activities, the amount of time they take, and also the individual steps, now we're ready to move on to some other things. Now one of the things we're doing here is we have a, another activity called a sparge activity, which just like the mashing activity, um, uses ingredients. And um, the one thing that's different about sparge activity is the sparge activity produces a byproduct. So what we're going to do now is we're going to take a look at, since we've identified the activities and the resources and the time, now we're going to look at the materials that go in at these different activity levels look at the product assignment here and well first one we look at here is our mashing activity this is the activity right here this activity consumes these ingredients here malt 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 and water these 10 10 see this is a 10 10 10 20 20 10 30 these are the ingredients that it consumes all right so now let's take a look at the sparge. And what sparge does is it consumes water. But also what sparge does is it creates a byproduct. And the byproduct of the sparge operation is this spent grain right here. 
So when we sparge it, basically we've taken these uh, grains, we've boiled them, now we put them in a filter, and we put some more water through them, and that's the sparging process. And now we take these grains, and we're going to dispose of them. They're a byproduct. So these spent grains are coming out at this point, and then we're getting we're planning on getting 1.25 pounds of grains during this sparge activity. So this is how we identify when and where and the quantity of byproducts that come out of the process. So once we've done that, we've identified all of our steps in the manufacturing process. We've identified which materials we're going to use, when we're going to use them, what quantities we're going to use. Our scrap factor would adjust these quantities upwards when it comes to our planning model, and I'll show you that right now. So that's, uh, that's done within the system. We, we run our check consistency test. Production model is consistent. This is a really nice feature that SAP has. Uh, all of these models use information from so many different sources, and it's very important that everything tie together properly and everything would be properly set up. So SAP has in a variety of different places these check consistency buttons. And what it will do is it will run a little check, make sure that all of the basic data is set up properly and it will give you error messages that will allow you to go back and set it up properly because you want to catch it now not later on when something doesn't work right in your production process. So we're going to close this out and I'm going to just take a look at these. Uh, what, I, what I had done here for this uh, item here is I had created a, a production model that did not have scrap and I saved that and then I created a second one that did have 5% scrap. So we'll just take a quick look at this and you can see what the difference is. And this one here, for example, our check hops. We're using 3,500 grams of check hops in order to produce 500 gallons of finished product wort. And then here's our spent grain as well. So we're getting 500 gallons of wort using 3,500 grams of hops. Go to this one, and it's 3684 because this one, this particular uh, planning model, had a 5% scrap factor built in. So what it did is it automatically updated all of the quantities of the materials by 5%. Also, what it would do is it would, if the materials were used in an activity that had a variable time on it, and the variable being that it was a function of how much material was going in, it would increase that activity by 5% as well as long as it was variable and not fixed. So that's a quick review of the uh, planning models within uh, Business by Design. Thank you.